Hey there, folks. We're back, and uh, we've got quite a bit to do with this set, so uh, let's get started. First of all, let's talk to Tally. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Well, you're sounding upbeat. Glad you're feeling better. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. He made it funny. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority. But with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. Well, don't worry, we'll find something. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. So if you hear panting, that's my dog. She won't settle down. She is trying to storm outside, but not quite getting there. And she cannot stay in storms, so, yeah. Uh, why? What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So are you something like royalty? Even though he's an admiral, not a king, but... Whatever, we're Shepard, we're dumb. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? We've been hitting the head. No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Probably not. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. Have you been getting preferential treatment? You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. Well, damn, that's kind of a lot of pressure. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. It's kind of true everywhere, really. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. Uh, what if we save the galaxy? That seems pretty damn important. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. So what's the answer then? What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. Oh, really? But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First we stop Seren, then I'll worry about my own problems. Uh, that's enough for now. I should go. See you later. Later, this will lead to a quest, I think. I think it's what we have to do. Uh, every, I think everybody has their own little... It's not a loyalty mission, but it's like a side mission for them. Tally's is by far the fucking longest. It's not even close. You have to do so much shit. Whereas, like, people like, uh, Garrus and Rex, theirs are pretty damn short. Especially Garrus's. Commander, good to see you. Why, hello, sir. You've been with c a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things. Hmm, anything specific? I like good stories. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit... disturbing. Huh? How so? What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless. Nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. Ew. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new 
Back in a second, I gotta drop a man. Some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. But first, uh, uh, is this common? You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the Cyclops. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had a station in a bit of a panic. An Elcor. This case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. What'd you find? So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. <laughs> After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Wait, 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 wait. Krogan testicles? You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000. God damn. That's 40,000 for a full set. 40,000 for a full set. Killing. Math kitties means they have four of them. Yeah. What about the doctor? What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Uh, interviewing? You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. Works for me. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. Duh! Uh, the test tubes? He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Ew. Most of them were a mess. But only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. Uh... Fucking bastard. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. What? Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. Did they just let him go? But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down. But CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. God damn it. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. Idiots! No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He Some said, the show, is Cloaca. Quit. Well, Wait, he's not a Solarian. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. I agree. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. Yeah, Just probably. Wish have stopped him. That's all. What about this Dr. Salion? Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. It's ah. a of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Well, give it to me. We're going to go crash the party of your homeboy, and yeah. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But, Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion. I'm gonna be there when you find him. Okie dokie. And now for Rex. 
What do you want, Shepard? Yeah, what do you want, Shepard? How about a personal inquiry, sir? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Okay, yes. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Well, why leave? Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Really? What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war, but the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What about you? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. What about Jared, though? I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows. Near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. And you went? It sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Wait a second, your father? Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. Oh, that should be good. We talked, but we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. Pwned! That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. Well, damn. Uh, what about other family? You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. Would it work? I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. Well, share it with me, sir. What kind of business? Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Uh, armor? What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. Bitch. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. I'll look for it. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. You just say you didn't know where it was. So long, right? Whatever. Shepard. 
Right. <clears throat> okay, so three things we'd like to accomplish. The first two being the, the I'll call them loyalty missions. And the other one, uh, we still have to deal with that crazy cult of biotics. Yeah. Excuse me. This should be fun. Uh, come on. Oh, oh, by the way, I gave heavy consideration to uh, toning down the difficulty, totally pussing out. And I may still yet do that, but I'm going to give it a little bit longer. If I end up busting out, well, so be it. I suck at Mass Effect 1. What do you want me to say? All right, now, uh, the journal. I used to never use the uh, journal this much. It's kind of funny. After talking to Rex, you learned that he's looking for his family ceremonial armor. It was taken by the Turians after the Kroger Rebellion, and now a profiteer named Ton Actus has it. Find the Turian who stole Rex's family armor. He's hiding at a base somewhere in the Argos Road cluster. Uh, have we already been there a bunch? Uh, Okay. We'll read Garrus's later. Anyway, Argos Row. Uh, wait a minute. Did it say exactly where? Based somewhere in the Argos Row cluster. Uh, okay. Well, all we can do is go searching. Let's go. I think I already messed with my equipment and stuff, so. Meh. here for something? Uh, Hydra? Let's see if this is it. I skip, skip, me skip. No, I can't skip. Son of a bitch. Eee, Normandy, go! Oh, here. This game were rather loud, but like the speaking bits are so quiet. Uh, Varmalis, not it. Met Ghost, this is probably it. Uh, warning, level 2 heat hazard. Met Ghost is a large terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Its hot surface is mainly composed of nickel with deposits of potassium and heavy metals. It is a mineralogical treasure trove. It's concentrated heavy elements constantly being brought to the surface by volcanic activity. Oops. Met Ghost is inhospitable and dangerous, and expeditions must be well, pre well prepared to survive any length of time. With its high mass, heat trapping clouds, and constant volcanic venting, Met Ghost seems well on its way to becoming a Venetian pressure, pressure cooker world. So, yeah. Uh. It's pretty damn hot down there. So, uh, yeah, we don't want to step out of the ship for too long. At least I assume this is where I want to go. I'm going to be really upset if this isn't the place. Okay, Garrus wants, or, uh, Rex wants to go. We're going to check Tally. Look at that, we're, like, completely even down there. That's nice. Wait, I should have expected as much. We were a pure engineer and then two vanguards. Um, you know what? I haven't upgraded Rex's equipment. I wonder if I still have anything left to give him. Uh, if not, well, I hope this isn't too hard. Nothing that me and Tally can't handle. Huh? Uh, Rex. Draw your helmet, boy. Um, 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 um. Oh, goody, I have, like, nothing to give him. Uh, um, well, shoot. Uh, yeah, I have nothing to give him. This is... This might be bad, I don't know. Uh, well, let's make the most of what he's got, then. Uh, let's make it as sure as assault rifles don't suck, I guess. 
Advanced overkill. Womp, 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 womp. Uh, physics forces. Yes, sir. Regenerate. Greatly. Um, he has barrier. That's good. Increases health by a crap ton. Uh, let's give you immunity. Barrier. Stasis. Just because, man. Okay, so hopefully he can make the most of what he's got. At least he's my most skilled weapon user. Eh? Eh? He's got a crap ton of hit points. He has more than everyone except for uh, Soldier Shepherd, I think. Not 100% sure on that. Uh, save there. Map. Survey throwing in the transponder signal. So we surveyed this. So wait, is, this is the wrong planet then, I think. So check out that transponder signal just in case. Isn't this where we fought the uh, pressure mall? I don't know. I've, I've already surveyed something on here, so this probably isn't, isn't it. Let's see, I don't remember it being on a hot planet, but I, it's been a while since I've gone through the game. Add more to the area map, apparently. Yeah, this is the only thing of interest here. We'll also investigate real quick, and then, uh, yeah. Uh, nothing to investigate here. Okay, I guess we're done here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, wait a minute. There we go. Okay, so this is not the planet. So where the hell is it? Okay, not Metgos. Canrum? Uh, did I read? I don't think I read this one. This is an interesting one, though. Canrum is a small, rocky world with a trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of carbon. Canrum was the site of the warlord Shiagar's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the current rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Shiagar was a female warlord, and one of the few remaining frontal females at that. She had, through viciousness and cunning, parlayed her unique value into a position of power. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. When Shiagar's death was announced, vengeful male Krogan admirers, near and far, swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousand of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they had the blood of Shiagar. Yeah. Good times. Um. Saiba? survey it to kind of a pretty looking planet. Yay, Helium 3. Um, this planet? No. Oh, this one was hit by an asteroid. Um, so I guess it's in the same system as uh, Pinnacle Station? Which I'll probably end up doing Pinnacle Station soon, I'm not sure. I don't do very well there, I'd just be showing it off, yeah. Uh, Patashi? Survey! Uh, boring. Well, not boring, but less interesting than some of the other things you could find. Make sure you scan the asteroid fields. You never. 
Because they won't pop up on screen. You have to just kind of scan around to kind of highlight one. This asteroid is emitting a weak intermittent signal at a frequency of 1540 MHz. We found a Prothean data disk. During the scan of the Phoenix system asteroid field, you detected an odd energy reading that Tally determined was chlorine in nature. She led a recon team into the asteroid field, where she discovered an abandoned freighter. The team could not determine why the ship was there, but they did find a Prothean data disk on board. Sweet! Um, let me recheck Matashi. Um, it's pretty looking. <laughs> Most boring description ever. Silsalto is a standard heli hydrogen helium gas giant. It has no remarkable features. Like, alright. Fair enough. Hmm? Oh. Um, Tonto? Yeah, this is it. This is it. Tuntau is an enormous, low-density terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere of methane and helium. Despite being nearly 20 astronomical units from Phoenix, the star's great heat and the insulating thickness of the atmosphere makes the surface surprisingly temperate. The crust is composed of and mainly composed... Uh, wait, composed of and mainly composed of... What? Why did I say that? Whatever. That's what it says. Mainly composed of sodium and silicon dioxide with deposits of various light metals. While Tuntau is not habitable, the relative pleasantness of the surface conditions make it a popular location for small ships traveling through the Argus Road Cluster to land for drive discharge. Um, yeah, the temperature's not too bad. 21 Celsius is a little, a little, chilly than, a little chillier than Earth. Uh, pressure's, uh, up there. Not too bad gravity. It's kind of a shame it's not habitable. Same with methane and helium. That would not be fun to breathe. It's like breathing in a fart balloon. Ha! <laughs> fart balloon. I'd crack myself up. God, we've spent like almost 30 minutes just dicking around. I was getting a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whee! Oy. Mm -hmm. Kind of pretty here. Let's see. Hidden structure, anomaly, and debris. At least he put us close by to where we want to go. Pretty sure this is where I want to go. Left bumper or right bumper? Assholes! Boom! Oh, what a shot! I made that kill! Wow! There was like three of them? Four? I think three. No, wait, there was another one over there. It made four. I just killed the entire garrison with one random cannon shell. Mm. Bitchin'. <laughs> That'll never happen again. No sense standing around. I agree, Rex. You lead. I'll follow. Okie dokie. Okay, let's go. Shotgun time. Oh, Rex has like no shields. Oh. 